On what was to be a typical Monday morning, residents of Sinai slum started the day as they do any other. However, a deadly explosion ripped through the informal settlement, killing 100 people. The blast that resulted in a raging fire was started after a pipeline carrying lethal super petrol burst. Nine years on, the residents who survived the blast still call the slum home and await some form of compensation and eventual resettlement. Tonight, on the National Reminder, our very own Victoria Rubadiri takes you back to ground zero of the Sinai fire tragedy. It's hard to believe that nine years ago, this area was decimated by a deadly explosion caused by an oil leak. Now, the force of the blast was so great, some witnesses say manhole covers were flung into the air. The carnage was larger than usual because of the number of people who were said to have been filling containers with oil from the spill. In addition, the hour it struck caught people who were heading to work in the morning. Now, according to reports, 100 lives were lost. Charred bodies were found as far as 300 meters from the blast site. Now, emergency response teams from government and NGOs swung into action, aiding the injured in getting medical attention. Leaders would soon throng the congested slum and hospitals where the injured were taken. It is... Um Unimaginable that um, so many people should lose lives in, in this way. However, the Sinai fire exposed a bigger problem of perennial neglect of informal settlements where thousands live without services, access roads, or security. As we were making our way down here, we spoke to some of the residents who told us a resettlement program is yet to happen. In the last nine years, many of them have had to rebuild on their own. They lost friends, they lost family, they lost property. The land on which the Sinai slum is located is owned by the Kenya Pipeline Company. The oil pipeline connecting Mombasa to Nairobi and Uganda passes through the area. Shanty homes mainly constructed of timber and iron sheets are built along or on top of the pipeline. Uh, we have been trying to remove them, uh, but unfortunately uh, we have not completely succeeded. Oil spills are common here, and residents often fetch the spillage without any major incidents. But September 12, 2011, was the day disaster would strike. So just what went wrong on that fateful day? Well, a buildup of pressure in a connection between two pipes along the line that pumps from Mombasa to Nairobi depot caused the burst. And that spillage found its way uh, into the stormwater drainage system, which runs from our terminal all the way through to other um, depots and the area in the industrial area, and finally ends up at the Gong River. Unfortunately, the product that had spilled was a super petrol, which is lethal. At the time of the leak, the oil was flowing at a speed of 589,000 liters per hour. The Kenya pipeline estimated it may have lost more than 10,000 liters of oil within the six minutes it took to shut the line down after the burst. In early 2012, an investigation report revealed the spillage that resulted in the fire was attributed to a fault and substandard gasket. Well, that made way for a lawsuit in May that year when more than 300 victims sued Kenya Pipeline Company, Kenya Power and Lighting Company, and the City Council of Nairobi and the National Environment Management Authority. They claimed that the defendants 
acted negligently in constructing an oil pipeline without putting adequate fire equipment in place and failed to uphold their statutory duties. The plaintiffs at the time were seeking over 25 billion shillings in compensation. Five years would pass until the courts would finally render a verdict. The ruling by High Court Judge Edward Murethy, delivered on February 6, 2017, declined to award the 25 billion shillings sought by the survivors. He directed them to file a proper suit where they should claim to recover personal injury damages. Now, the respondents, that included KPC, NEMA, and the Nairobi City Council, were directed to include a Sinai settlement as part of its slum upgrading and prevention a program with liberty to relocate and otherwise compensate the residents to clear the Kenya pipeline way leave. Well, since then, attempts by the Kenya Pipeline Company to have the encroachers vacate its way leave have borne little fruit. The inhabitants have continuously challenged the evictions, demanding the government provides a proper resettlement plan. That's your national reminder of the week lest you forget.